Hi friends, Mark Shack from M&M Cage Company here with a little video today about lighting for birds. Specifically, what we're going to talk about today are the lamps that claim to simulate natural daylight and have a health benefit for your birds. Um, because of the well-documented short attention span of people who watch videos on the internet, I'm going to jump to the conclusion right now before you press the stop button and I lose you, okay? Are you ready? Here's the conclusion. Any lamp manufacturer who claims that their lamp simulates natural daylight is misrepresenting the truth. It's impossible, as in the laws of physics won't allow it, to turn electrical current into anything that simulates natural daylight. It can't be done. Just like you can't turn a rock into a zebra, you cannot turn electricity into the full spectrum, like a daylight full spectrum. So, I can't show you that here, but a little later in the video, if you have patience and stay with me, I will show you that, because this is, this is nothing new. Uh, it's been proven for 20 years. Um, I will show you the actual data that proves it so you don't have to take my word for it. But now I'm going to show you about the UVA and the UVB thing. Right now, you're looking at receipts from Amazon that shows that I bought these lamps. And you can clearly see from the receipts that they claim that they have UVA and they claim that they have UVB. And as you can see, they are uh, pretty expensive, $17, $27, um, quite a bit of money. But hey, if it keeps your bird healthy, then it's worth the money, right? As you see, here's the same ones that I bought on Amazon. I am going to open them up. I know this is the boring part, but I just, I wanted you to see it coming out of the package. Uh, you know, just to show you there's nothing hinky going on here. And I know, not very exciting watching a bald guy screw bulbs in, but these little things are to keep the light from washing out the camera. Bulb number one. <clears throat> Bulb number two, I, uh, I covered the names up over here, so we're not mentioning any manufacturer's names. All right, resist the urge to move on to a more exciting video. Now the third bulb. Um, Home Depot. Okay. Nine dollars for four. So you're looking at a two dollar bulb versus the seventeen and twenty seven dollar bulb. Hang with me. Just want you to make sure then I'm showing you the real thing. And now it's really going to look unprofessional because I'm going to come around and zoom in. I don't want to cut away from the camera. So you think I switched any bulbs around.
this is a UVA UVB meter um, it doesn't it's it was like 500 bucks but it all it does is show the presence of them um, it measures in um, milliwatts per square centimeter so it doesn't give you the wavelength or anything it's a very basic gauge and I want to show you that it works this is a this is a light I made um, bird poop and dust all included I ran this in my my bird room for two years I did I wanted to do a study on the effects of UVA on birds so this is a strip it's, you can barely see it's on because you can't see UV um, this is a strip of UVA LEDs and I'm going to show you that the meter works and unfortunately this is an LCD meter so it's going to I hope you can see it now meter works got a flashlight to try to shine the LCD screen up for you UVA UVB light number one okay it is not reading anything zero UV nothing um, the other one press the button UV nothing Home Depot bulb, as would be expect, UV nothing. But let me show you something. As I get closer to the bulb, all right, I'm almost touching it now. It's picking up a tiny little bit. Tiny little bit. As I almost touched the bulb. But look. Home Depot one does the same thing. So that tiny little bit of UV um, uh, electromagnetic waves is a byproduct of the sulfurs being lit up by the electricity. All bulbs, all CFL bulbs are gonna have it false. Now, we're gonna look at one more bulb. Take this one out of here. We're going to look at this one. Okay. This one says UVB on the box. The other ones don't mention UV on the box. They only mention it in their ad. This one we're going to put in and we're going to take our meter and we're going to flash our flashlight on it and we're going to press the button and holy cow, it's UV. So this one actually does have UV and what we're going to do real tricky here because we're going to put the flashlight under the shoulder. This is a piece of glass. Um, UVB will not go through glass. UVA will. So, I'm going to show you. You can see it. We'll take the magical filter. And, mm, mm, so you can see about half of what's coming out of this lamp. Hopefully you can see it. Is UVB. All right. UVB. Okay. The stuff you wear glasses to protect yourself from, uh, UVB, the stuff that we know causes skin cancer. Um, why anybody thinks it's a good idea to expose a bird to UVB for 12 hours a day, 365 days a year is beyond me. And it is well documented that many, many birds have cataracts and go blind 
because of the misuse of these kind of lights. What do I mean by misuse? They put, they put it too close, all right? The instructions on this lamp right here are going to tell you uh, recommended operating distance while it's burning in. They're saying 18 to 20 inches away and 12 to 14 inches away after it's burned in. So the other thing about these lamps, they don't last very long. You know, it, it, in six months, that it, you'll be really gone. Um, wait a minute, 12, 18 inches away? Let's see what happens. Flashing back on. Here we are. And nothing. It starts to pick up uh, about eight inches away. A little bit. So, really, you know, they're saying keep it 18 to 20 inches away so your bird doesn't go blind, right? Because you really don't want UVB shining on your bird all day, every day. That's why the 18, 20 inches away. So, you buy this $30 bulb and the, and the $100 uh, fixture to put it in and you put it um, 18 to 20 inches away and you're back to the $2 uh, Home Depot lamp. So the conclusion is that every one of these bulbs is producing pretty much the same thing no UVA or UVB is reaching the birds on these. Uh, therefore, there can be no health benefits. Um, there are not full spectrum. These bulbs are no different than the Home Depot bulb. Your vet will tell you, you have to have one of these bulbs for your bird's health, or it's a bad thing if it isn't right the internet experts are going to tell you oh you've got to have these or the healthier bird isn't going to be great and you're a terrible bird owner if you don't have that well why, why do they you know, you know why do they think these things work they're taking the manufacturer's word for it hook line and sinker and not doing any research into seeing whether the claims are correct or not I'm sorry, there is no study out there that shows that any of these lamps have any health benefit. Welcome to my backyard. Down in the shop, we learned a lot of interesting things about the amount of UV produced by the bulbs that claim to be full spectrum. They claim to produce UV and they claim to simulate natural environment. So it's only appropriate that now we come out into the natural environment. Now two of the bulbs we looked at, we noticed didn't put any UV out until we almost touched them with the meter and then they put out 0.1. The other bulb did put out UV. It didn't put out any. It had zero at the recommended distance. Um, once we moved it in to eight inches away, which is half the recommended distance, we had 0.1. About three inches away, we had 0.6. Well now, those numbers don't mean anything to you. So that's why we came out here to kind of compare those numbers with what is in the natural environment. So, with the same nifty little meter here, the sun is over in that direction, so we are going to see what the sun puts out. I'm going to walk up so you can read it. Right now, it's putting out approximately 2.2 to 2.4. Now, this is versus the point 0.1. This is 
2.4. So is it safe to assume that in the natural environment that um, birds receive 2.2 milliwatts per square centimeter UV? Absolutely not. That could be the furthest from the truth. The amount of UV that actually reaches the surface of the planet, um, it changes by many, many factors. Time of day, um, amount of clouds, UV doesn't go through clouds, UVB doesn't go through clouds at all, only a little bit of UVA. So you got cloud cover, you got time of day, you got time of year, and you got location on the Earth. The closer you are to the equator, the more UV there is. We're in Wisconsin at the end of November, so this 2.4 is going to be about as low as it's ever going to be on a sunny day like today. start talking about natural environment, every one of your birds is going to have a different natural environment, a different amount of UV in its natural environment. Some of the smaller Amazon parrots live most of their lives under the canopy, which no UVB penetrates. Uh, you know, some birds are in the sun and out of the sun. Uh, the grassland finches, um, they're in the sun all day. Again, depending on which part of the world your bird is from, they're going to receive a different amount of UV. Now, rest assured, none of your birds are from Wisconsin, and none are from latitudes this, this far north. So, this 2.4 um, is, is ridiculously low, but I wanted you to see how even a ridiculously low number is so much higher than these lamps that claim to be natural environment. Taking into consideration all of the factors that define natural environment, for there to be a claim that one bulb simulates natural environment is just absolutely preposterous. It, it isn't true. It can't be done, never has, never will. Welcome back to my shop. So far, we've been talking about the ultraviolet component in the bulbs that the manufacturers claim simulate natural daylight, and we've seen just exactly how much they truly do simulate natural daylight. But the, there's still another component, the whole full spectrum thing that we haven't talked about. Now, at this point, you're probably getting really bored and thinking, oh my gosh, when is this video ever going to end? All right. Well, to tell you the truth, as far as the subject of lighting goes, we've just scratched the surface. It is a very lengthy and very technical subject, lighting. The lamp manufacturers take advantage of the complexity of the subject of lighting to continue to bamboozle the public into thinking that there's something magical about their light when there isn't. Because to tell you the truth, it's really easy to make the claim that this light does X, Y, and Z, but it's very difficult to dispute that claim because of the whole complexity of the subject. If it's starting to sound like I'm exaggerating a little bit or uh, like I'm a conspiracy theorist or something like that, and if something in the back of your mind is saying, like, hey, come on, come on, come on, this is, this is so extreme, it can't possibly be that bad. Well, let me tell you, it is. Manufacturers do this all the time. So, to help with uh, the boredom you're experiencing right now, we're going to have a little bit of fun, and we're going to look at some other manufacturers who made just as outlandish claims about their products as full-spectrum lamp manufacturers make about theirs. 
not too long ago, a company came out with this product, and you're probably going to remember this. It was called Airborne. It was supposed to prevent colds, cure colds, boost your immune system, all kinds of miraculous things. Unfortunately, Airborne agrees to pay $23.3 million to settle lawsuit over false advertising of its miracle cold buster. Okay, in reality, this did nothing. We jump down to this example and we see Hershey's. Um, one you would think is a pretty reputable company and one that you could put your trust in, right? Why would they have any reason to lie? Well, a few years back, um, they came out with a syrup that contained calcium in it. Um, I guess they figured people would like to strengthen their bones while they had their ice cream sundae. Unfortunately, when you turn the bottle over on this label, which by law has to be accurate, and you look at the calcium, it is 0%. So, the advertisement, the deception, calcium, contains calcium, the reality contains no calcium. Here's another one. Who doesn't remember the shape-ups, right? The shoe, well over $200 shoe, uh, this weird thing, and you were going to walk in it, and oh my gosh, it was going to do all these wonderful things. It was going to firm you up and improve your posture and blood circulation, and um, this, these were miracle shoes that were going to make you healthy, and all you had to do was just go about your day and walk in them. Well, not really. Skechers will pay $40 million to settle FT charges that it deceived consumers with ads for toning shoes. Did. Let's go to our last example. Duracell. A household name when it comes to batteries. They don't have anything to prove. Um, you know, just about anybody's going to think of Duracell as being uh, a top shelf battery. Well, they came out with a uh, longer-lasting battery. This was supposed to last three times as long, and it cost three times as much. Unfortunately, Duracell to pay $50 million in battery power settlement. Actu in actuality, this battery was the same battery that they had always been selling, and it didn't contain anything in it that made it special. Manufacturers do this stuff all the time. That's why we have this, this Latin phrase up here called caveat emptor, which means let the buyer beware. It is our job as consumers to verify the claims of the manufacturers. And that's what this video is about. This video is about exposing the deception um, from the companies who say that their light bulbs can make your bird healthy, but in reality, zero. So I've been promising you science, and we're to that point now where you're going to see it. Light is measured by an instrument called a spectrometer. It puts out this graph that you're not going to understand until you understand some real basic things about light. All around us um, there are electromagnetic waves. There are radio waves, microwaves, infrared waves, Depending on the wavelength, and wavelength is the measurement from peak to peak, they have different effects on their, our, our surrounding. Radio waves from peak to peak are as long as a football field. Microwaves start getting a little smaller. 
Then we start getting it into infrared. And then all of a sudden, the wavelengths become the right length to become visible light. The electromagnetic waves that we want to talk about are made by the sun because of the whole natural environment thing. The sun creates EM waves in the ultraviolet. And we've been talking about UVA and UVB. Um, it creates UVC, but it never gets through the atmosphere. Very little UVB gets through the atmosphere. Most of it's UVA. This is the visible spectrum of light. And then the infrared, that's the heat you feel from it. Now here what we can see, this is, these are the different wavelengths. A visible light is between 400 and 700 nanometers. When we are in the visible spectrum between that 400 and 700 nanometers, it reflects off of objects back to our eyes, and that's where color comes from. Just as the color of paint changes when you mix different colors, um, light changes when you mix different wavelengths. So as all these different wavelengths uh, combine with each other, it creates up to one million different colors. If only certain wavelengths are present, you're only going to see those colors. Um, remember black lights that we play with? And uh, you turn a black light on and every other light off, you know, that everything looks really funny. Um, well, that's because all the other wavelengths have been eliminated except that one and that one is actually you know almost near uv and uh that's why it makes everything funny because it's the only spectrum present now this is what the output of a spectrometer is this is what it produces and how it reports the measurements of light down here you see these are the wavelengths this is what we've been talking about okay so along the bottom is the wavelength and in this direction is basically the power of that wavelength so here you're seeing a fluorescent lamp, and it's just showing you how much of these different wavelengths are present in the light that this lamp produces. This over here, this is sunlight at noon. This is what um, you know, the full spectrum lamps are supposed to be simulating. Now, as you can see, it is, and, and, and I like this graph because it added the color to it. So this is, not only does it represent how much there of that spectrum there is, it also is kind of telling you what, what color that is. So, you can see these numbers, there's a 100, and it is, you know, it's, it's almost the entire spectrum. When you start getting down to this short of wavelength, now you're starting to get into the UV. Um, this is, a, a, a spectrometer only measures visible light, so that's why it starts to drop off here. But as you can see, very even, uh, across here, all of the wavelengths are present. You remember that slide we see that a wavelength, when it reflects off something, is what our what causes our eyes to see color. You're when you have this many 
of the wavelengths and they're all this high um, the color of something you're looking at is going to look as natural as it's possibly going to be all right now sunlight at noon fluorescent lamp now you're seeing now you're seeing the difference so when the fluorescent lamp manufacturer says um, it simulates daylight. You can see it's not even close. It's... The other interesting thing about this chart is in the dark blue line is a T12 fluorescent lamp not claimed to be as full spectrum. And it cost about $6. All right. And you can see that line. This other line is a T12 fluorescent lamp claimed as full spectrum. And it costs $15. So as you can see, that full spectrum bulb is no different than the standard price full spectrum bulb. Here's another chart. Here's daylight way up here nice and even we talked about that here is a full spectrum t12 bulb in green and here is a full spectrum incandescent light way down here as you can see none of these even come close to being natural sunlight if you are into reading the scientific evidence of what I've been telling you. There's plenty of places on the internet. This happens to be one of my favorite, Lighting Research Center. And this article that is about full spectrum light sources. It's long, but if you're like me, you eat this stuff up like candy. If you want to be an educated consumer uh, this is one place to go do it believe it or not this concludes the video if you've made it this far I am very proud of you I hope you enjoyed the information you saw naturally it is just the tip of the iceberg uh, but I led you to the places where you can Go get the scientific data. Um, I really hope that you benefited from it and learned a lot. Thanks again for watching. Have a nice day.